Hi everybody, this is Chris. And this is Matt. And this is Duke Nuckum. Duke Nuckum, the first of the Duke <laughs> Nuckum series. <laughs> uh, it is not Duke Nukem. What is it also not, Matt? It's not a review. It's not a review. We don't do reviews here. No. We, we revisit classics and we have feelings about them and then we discuss those feelings. Yes. Sometimes they're not even classics. Although this, I would have to say, is probably one. Although I have a feeling you have feelings. What do you mean sometimes they're not classics? Name one game we've played that is not a classic piece of video game history. Zorro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Zorro wasn't exactly a classic. Uh, it is a classic something, though. I mean, you could at least argue that uh, let me just take a quick peek through here. Zip, 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 zip. Are you looking through the list to yeah. find non classics? Mm-hmm. Oh man, I think they're they're classics because we talk about them. I like, would we, argue a sen- someone's going to get mad at me. Hey, here comes the hate mail. Oh boy, I got uh, just my ceiling fan. Hold on. No problem. Go ahead. Ascendancy. Ascendancy is not a classic. I wouldn't say Stunt Island's a classic. No one's longing for the old days of Stunt Island, except the one guy who sent me a uh, check the comments in there if you're interested. He has a channel that's full of edited Stunt Island videos. See? Because it's a classic. That's why. One man does not a classic make. <laughs> man, it's a classic. Moby damn. Dick's a classic, but I want to read it. Fair enough. <laughs> Have you ever read it? I've started Moby Dick so many times, <clears throat> and then I get to that chapter that's like 900 pages long about the taxonomy of whales, and I'm just like, I, I can't do it. I just can't. Like, I want to do it, so I want to want to do it, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> Have you? Yes. Oh, man. Oh, man. I, I would not do it again. <laughs> yeah it's not a, i got the gist I, yeah it's not I don't know, it's not a light read anyway it's also this is also not a uh directed conversation it kind of meanders it's more of a book club format we've played the game for a month we're coming back we're going to talk about it now uh although in this game maybe not a whole month because this is a short game we do two games every month a short game something we can do in like a day or two or so and then a longer game, something where we're going to spend the month playing it. And we'll talk about what the games are coming up at the end of the show. That's a cliffhanger for you to stay for the whole thing. Or it's just fast game. forward to the end with the little scrubber at the bottom. You could probably do that, too. <laughs> so you can see what game that is. So you can fast forward through that one to see if we finally do something you want to see. Right. <clears throat> or you could just look probably at the not. titles of things. And... Yeah. There's a million solutions to this problem, as a wise man once said. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So here's a, here's a bit of trivia. All right. I'm going to start the video while you tell me the trivia. Wait, wait. Don't, though, because the re- I want to talk about the reason this <clears throat> says Duke Nukem, not the way that we all remember Duke Nukem as being mm. N-U-K-E-M. Do you know why? Uh, I've read the notes, so yes, I do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so there is, there is a Captain Planet villain who was named Duke Nukem and they found out and they were like, Oh shit. Like we can't name our guy Duke Nukem. Uh, so we have to name him Duke Nukem. But then they figured out that they never registered the intellectual property for Duke Nukem. And I think we all know why, because this is the biggest bullshit uh, villain ever. He's wearing flip flops and Bermuda shorts in and it's just like a Hawaiian shirt. I mean, I don't want to alienate anyone, but... You don't want to alienate our Captain Planet fan? (laughs) I hate Captain Planet. Like, it was never interesting. And, like, I get it. We all love the Earth. But you can't have your villain wear flip-flops and expect me to be there for it. You can't have your show that heavy-handed. Your show has to be more of an Octonauts level. Sneak the learning in. Right. Right. But anyway, so... For this version of Duke Nukem, they renamed it with a U to get around. Uh, 
the interfering with this bullshit intellectual property the end that's that that was what you wanted to talk about okay yes i was actually like you mentioned a little we were talking about the art and copyrights and stuff like that and one of the other things is this game's art borrows heavily from things like turrican and uh Mega Man. Mega Man. And like the boxes, if you look at the Mega Man PC boxes in the warehouse levels and the Duke Nukem one, they are very, very close. Very close. And it struck me as someone, I was listening to some artists debate whether NFTs were going to help artists, you know, keep their work from getting stolen. Mm -hmm. And all I could think is, do you know how often someone will create a shitty knockoff just to not pay you for your art? Yeah, absolutely. Like Louis Vuittons instead of <laughs> right. Yeah, totally. Gnucci's. <laughs> and maybe this is like a, a a premonition of things to come because now, like, you can just go buy assets on the Unity Asset Store and make whatever game you right. want, and maybe it'll be the same as every other game. But uh, and then there's yeah. Keeney, K E N N E Y. I do not know how to pronounce it. Everybody wants to say Kenny, but it's not Kenny. Uh, Asset Jesus, and he gives away so much free game art. That is actually used in like official Unity tutorials and stuff like that because it's sure. just so good and so prevalent. And he's got a few things he sells, but mostly it's free in donations. And yeah, he's doing the Lord's work. He is. <laughs> it's appreciated. It really is. Uh, very rarely do I shill out for somebody, but that guy I'll shill out for all day totally. it's his stuff even when he makes something worth selling it's super cheap like um the uh, game we were playing that i made the maximum celerity mm -hmm. the model was made using his uh quick modeling slap something together software cool. i think i paid like four bucks or something for it like it... i don't know anyway we sometimes get off topic. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we get on topic. Sometimes we get on topic. I accidentally like fast forwarded through like that whole intro thing of Dr. Positron. Mm -hmm. And his tech bots. Dr. I don't know Proton. why they can't be robots, but they, they're just not robots. They're tech bots. Yeah, they're tech bots. Uh, this was a 1991 Apogee game designed by Todd Replogle. Mm -hmm. He uh, designed Caves of Thor, Monuments of Mars, Duke Nukem, Duke Nukem 2, Duke Nukem 3D. Yep. So pretty illustrious list of games. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was produced by Scott Miller. Yep. Who did Wolfenstein 3D, Raptor, Shadow Warrior, Max Payne, Max Payne 2, and Prey. Prey is interesting. It's good to see when people are still doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like it has it definitely has that kind of apogee like fuck you. This is what we're doing attitude like. Yeah, it's just stuff falling from the ceiling all the time and there's balloons and like it's just really kind of a chaotic mess of a thing. And that's just like that's how I think apogee likes to make games. They're just like we're, we're just going to do whatever. Well, what cracked me up about it is like all of what you just said is why I didn't like it back in the day it just seemed so weird and chaotic and it felt arcadey at a time where that's not why i played computer games anymore mm -hmm. and i mean like you can see there's a score this is an arcade game right and it that's you just don't play games like it. it's like Wolfenstein 3D had a score. I mean, it, it does. And it's it's an interesting milestone goal to kind of put into games on some level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I didn't give a shit about the score, but at the same time, I really liked that there was so much stuff all the time. And I... like most of the stuff doesn't do anything, 
Right. But it just like gives you something to do and sometimes it's dynamite and that adds a little bit of you know right excitement here and there yeah you're so, not always sure what you're going to get when you pop open a box i think it would have been more interesting to you've collected 50 of the 60 flags you've collected 25 of the 30 you know radios or yeah you know 99 of the 100 footballs that that would have given right. that completionist part of me right Right, where you want to go seek out the one that you're missing. Mm -hmm. Much more than getting the highest score. Because it might be like, well, I just, I'm still going to get a high score for this level. I'm good. Right. There is the Duke, though. Like, if you, sometimes in boxes there mm -hmm. are there's a letter. And if you spell out all of Duke, like, nothing really happens. But it's that kind of idea. Like, you want all of them because then you get, like, the huge score. Yeah. At the end. So there's that. Uh, but, yeah, like... It, it's weird to like not give a shit about score, but also like that it's there. Now I'm probably going to get some heat about how well I'm playing this. This is literally the first time I sat down and played it. What we're watching here in like, I don't know how many years. I mm -hmm. wasn't a huge fan of how the controllers were controls were laid out. Go, go, go be surprised. Um. <laughs> it's two buttons. It's control and alt, right? It's control and alt, and then the key, arrow keys for movement. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It started to cramp up my hands. Yeah. After a little bit. So you left them when you played. Yeah, I played the whole the whole thing with that. I discovered the keypad lets you do movement. Okay. And so what I did is I actually switched up arrow to five put jump on eight Man, you just cannot accept an out of the box key mapping and then like, fire with space and man my hand did not hurt okay yeah yeah i could see that i could see that working because us a lot of games from that time whether jump was a button or jump was push up on the controller was like some were out of the box that way i'm not going way off script doing this you know right right but yeah, you jump, you run around and jump a lot in the in this thing. But let me also say, a game from 1991 that was basically freeware because it was shareware and bought more if you wanted, had controller mapping. <laughs> right, right. Every game should have controller mapping for a multitude of reasons. Yeah, but mostly no. because you're getting super old now. That's part of it. Uh, Left-handed people. It. Right. There's a, a range of accessibility reasons. Yeah. And no one knew anything needed to be accessible in 1991. Right. I forgot to try this with a controller, though, but that is something you could do. Yeah, I, I had no desire to do it. Like, I was I was fine. I, I didn't really have any problems with it. You know, so in 1991, I was just thinking about this as we were saying it, because controller, and there was like a mouse something in there, too, I saw. Um Atari just re-released Centipede, which is a great game, and it looks beautiful, and it's a fun little, like, clicky twitch game that you can play. Yeah, but you need the ball. We need the ball. I would have accepted a mouse controller, but it's keyboard or joystick. Mouse does not work. Really? And you cannot remap controls at all. I wow. don't, and that is my only ding against the game, but it's kind of a big one. Right. You live and die by remapping. Yeah. <clears throat> hmm. Is it like modernized? It's very modernized. It's, yeah, it's modernized. It's probably should have been five bucks instead of 10 bucks. So catch it on sale if you can. Uh, it's mm -hmm. got these vector graphics and as you're like moving around, um, you can pick up power-ups and stuff, so the guy does mm -hmm. more different types of shots. You only get one guy. Wow. No level, no extra guys, no, just one guy, how far can you go? Go. Hmm. And then it gets frantic okay. and fun. And yeah. Yeah. If you're into that old-time arcade stuff, you could do a lot worse than Centipede if you don't mind not using the mouse for Centipede. 
I want the ball, man. Yeah, track ball would be awesome. Yep. Yep. You gotta have it. Gotta have it. I bet you could get a track ball. I haven't looked. Yeah, they, there are some big track balls around still, right? Most of them are the thumb, the little thumb one now. Mm-hmm. But I remember, like, I, I don't remember who made it, but there was a giant, like, globe-sized track ball that I always found kind of compelling. Yeah, they treat them like mice, though. They'd still hook in right, as a right. mouse. So... Right, it wouldn't do you any good for a centipede. It's just a crime. All right. Anyway, we're talking about Duke Nukem. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. What do you think of the graphics of Duke Nukem here? <laughs> I love his moon boots, man. Uh... No. <laughs> I noticed, like, in, in Duke Nukem 1, he looks kind of like a professional wrestler truck driver guy. Yeah. And then in Duke Nukem 2, they gave him a neck, which I think was a huge improvement. But in the second one, he kind of looks like a cross between Clint Eastwood and Gary Busey. So I don't know that that's better. But then, like, in 97, then he just, like, looks like a buff blonde guy with a neck. So I think they finally nailed it uh, with Duke Nukem 3D. Well, I mean... I don't think there's anyone on the planet who could argue they nailed it with Duke Nukem 3D. Uh, well, I'm just looking I mean, at two here real quick while you, yeah, talk about that. Yeah, because it's it's gone from the EGA graphics to SVGA, right? You know yeah, I mean? yeah. You can just do more with it. That said, I, mean, I, I love a purple sleeveless vest as much as the next guy. <laughs> right. Don't get me wrong. But what they did with the colors they had is really good with, mm -hmm. I think, one exception to me. And that is those gray spikes you're seeing down there at right. the bottom of this. Um, on some levels, they put those gray spikes on top of gray bricks. And you will not catch that if you're not paying really close attention. The worst is when they put them on the ceiling in the level that's like all gray oh, and you just yeah. like jump into them. It's <coughs> it's really it's kind of like, like what did gotcha. I just take damage? Oh, I see why. <laughs> yeah. It, and it, which is strange because this is so, the gameplay is fast paced. It's, it's not like deliberative at all. And that's what what you kind of have to do to avoid a situation like that. That's what I was about to say. I was about to say, like, it's you say it's not deliberative at all, but. I feel like the first time or several of the early times through, you have to play it. I guess you don't have to. But if you want to learn the levels and learn what to do, you have to be slow and deliberate and edge onto the screen and do the next thing. And then once you get good, you can just fly through the game. Well, the, I think the level design is one of the most interesting parts about this game because they're closed systems there's no fall damage mm -hmm. and so you're kind of like just in it you're in this kind of open level so you can you can be deliberative and you can plan your jumps and you can like map a route through it and explore right. it or you can just kind of like go balls out and jump around and just kind of discover things and find things and try to remember how to get back to the locked door later right like, that's how i played it quite a bit uh with, I, that's with success. Yeah, I was gonna say that was usually my first try at a level was just to kind of just go and start ramming around and see what happens. Um, sometimes with more success than others, and sometimes you know, mental note to self: the red key is to the left of where you start. Right. Totally. Yeah. Um, and then I'd go through and I'd play a little more slow paced and, and try and see what i can do and then as i kept doing that it just got faster and faster and faster right because even though this run. was our short like one or two day game i think i spent a good week playing this ultimately yeah, yeah. I, I had i had quite a bit of fun with it just because it's it's interest the levels are interesting the gameplay is kind of chaotic mm -hmm. uh and i wanted to see like what what they would do with each of these levels and they kept it pretty fresh they like add some items and that was you know. yeah that was one of the things too is like how are they going to keep it fresh you get boots that make you jump higher your gun gets powered up there's little things that sort of change the gameplay meaningfully but not drastically mm -hmm. right and you encounter like moving you know 
every one of these platform games has of them, but like the the treadmill platforms yeah. that you have to jump on and like all that all that shit is in here. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't encounter speaking of Mega Man, the disappearing platforms. I I, I hope that they're not in here because that is the worst uh, <laughs> arcade game mechanic ever. When platforms like reappear and disappear and you have to time your jumps. Mega Man did that so much, and I know this game borrowed from right. Mega Man a little bit. I also want to talk about, we just saw it there a second ago. So there's a, I wouldn't call it parallax backgrounds, because the background doesn't move. Mm -hmm. At least not specifically. Like, the wall we're looking at is technically background, and it does move with Duke. Mm -hmm. But then there's a background behind that. And they do a great job of like poking little holes in so yeah. you can see something or like a window of a sh looking at the hangar. Stuff like that where it's a little touch, but it made the world feel bigger than just the 2D level you're on. It gave it a little bit of depth. And I, I'm glad they added it. it. The game would have been worse off without it. Yeah, yeah, the, that impressed me too. And like the backgrounds are different, and and they they're interesting, right? Uh, Unlike here, a lot of platform games where you will get lost because everything looks the same, everything right. doesn't look the same. Right. There's different tile sets within the level. It it it's quite dynamic. Yeah, and, and that makes it interesting. And it also really helps with navigation because you're like, oh, I'm in the section with all the yellow like warning blocks or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, the exit is here. The transporter takes me to this section and that lets me know this. And, oh, there's a hole there, so there's probably some other way I can get in and get stuff out. They give the right amount of clues to do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And plus it's, it's fun to just, like, get dumped in a level and... You know, maybe you go left, maybe you go right, or maybe you just like fall down for a, a thousand hours and, and you're like way in a different spot all of a sudden. Then, and, and you see things go by and like, you know, you can get to all those things. I think that's something I would be really interested in. I don't know if like doing research on it is the right answer, but Mario 1 gets called a masterclass in level design because of how it forces you to move in a direction and it the time you're expected to jump it creates things that are supposed to happen based on if you're a new player you probably are going to do these things and odds mm -hmm. are you did mm -hmm. um but i think there needs to be something to be said for you're dropped in the middle and you can go any direction mm -hmm. and there is nothing pulling you in a direction it, mm -hmm. it, it you you are actually in control and feel in control of what you're going to do next absolutely and they do a good job not just like arbitrarily killing you for making a choice like that. Mm -hmm. like the first time i fell a long way i was like oh shit you know i'm dead it's all over for me uh but then like i hit the bottom and i was just like somewhere different and it it was hard and everything right you weren't you weren't secretly gate kept by they put an impossible enemy down there like haha ha, you thought right. you could go this way but ah you can't no you could go that way and maybe you didn't need to yet maybe it was just for points maybe you know a hundred things but mm -hmm. there were times playing this where again I keep saying this, but there's so much shit all over the place. There were times I was like, oh my God, I'm, I think I found a secret area because there's so much shit in here. Mm -hmm. It's like row after row of flags or something. Yeah. But then no, no, there's a key back there. You have to go there. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I guess I don't know. No, what a secret that's your is. bonus. Yeah. Not. That's your bonus for getting to the area. It's yeah. So. And like, can, can you, can you say anything in this game is really a secret? Because I don't think there is technically. Well, like, it, there's things you can explore and find. But that can be a secret, too. Like, if if it's not on the main path. And... But there is no main path. That's the thing. 
Well, one of the things they say on one of the levels is there's a secret shortcut if you know where to look that'll get you to the end faster. Did you find that? I didn't. <laughs> Me neither. I took the long ass way. Yep. Uh, but I mean, so there has to be a secret. Or that is the ultimate troll and bravo on them. <laughs> well, I, I think... I there's think a secret way to get there faster. <laughs> Assholes. <laughs> there's a difference between a secret way and a way that's less obvious in the context of this game. Okay, like... Because, like, it's not like you have to shoot the wall six times and then jump on the balloon or something. It's it's just like you just have to go a different way and kind of stumble upon it. Because there's nothing like... So for you, a secret has to be, like... It has to break the rules of the game. Yeah, it, it, has, it has to require some unusual action or discovery to find okay i i think okay now that makes sense like a true secret is something that you find by knowing the rules and knowing when and where to break them right as like opposed pushing to on just, a wall yeah to find it like that's that to me is a, a a true secret okay but like in wolfenstein a lot of the secret areas and secrets found were found just by pushing on walls and once you knew that and that that's a mechanic that was every secret was just pushing on a wall so are those secrets still yeah those are still secrets yeah because they're you're pushing on a wall as opposed to a door right okay right because it's not telegraphed to you okay. by the geometry of the level okay I, I feel pretty... I, I, I'll this. back you on that. I just wanted yeah. to be clear on what it was. So, Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sound. Let's talk about sound. <laughs> uh, it's it's bleepy and bloopy. It is. <laughs> it's really bleepy. It's like, it's like a slot machine, kind of. You Just like stuff is going off all the time. Sometimes you know what you did. Sometimes you don't. Uh, I liked it. Yeah, it, it had a certain charm to it. There is no uh, music. Right. Which I think was the right choice. I think it would have made me a little insane if there were more music. Well, the music wouldn't have been good. It would have been bleepy and bloopy, so it would have been constant just right PC right. speaker bleeping at you. And I... Can't. Sometimes I don't mind that, but when there's when the other sound design is so chaotic, mm -hmm. like you don't need to throw another layer on of this. Chaos. Yeah. Well, that is one of the nice things about it too, is because there's so much going on. I won't go as far as to say it forms its own soundtrack, but you never notice the silence unless you're like trying to find that last thing in the level and you've already cleared it out. Totally. In which case, yep. you probably need the calm and break anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Did you Did notice you... if you shoot the turkey legs, they turn into full turkeys? I was going to say that, which is <laughs> strange because if you shoot the cans of soda that also heal you, they explode and you don't get them. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Would this count? Well, I don't know if it count as a secret. But I, I found it interesting. There were a couple places where behind a box was a can. So you didn't see the can. But when mm -hmm. you shot the box, it shoots the can first. So you destroy the can trying to get to the box. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. I guess it doesn't... It breaks the rules. But I don't know that it's a secret. Yeah, I'm not sure if I would classify that as... Because it's out and open and you're going to discover it. And next time. Right. It's more like it. a fuck you. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> Especially when you really need it. And like, there's nothing worse than really needing health and then realizing you just shot a can of soda and watch it like fly into the air. Well, that the, happened to me so often. I was thinking about that uh, a couple days ago when I shot my 900th can. Um, why was I shooting the cans? And I eventually came to the conclusion it's because they're red. Red is right. the enemy color. Red is the warning color. Red is the shoot here to kill the boss color. And so right. you come on the screen, you're low on health, you see a red thing coming at you. You're like, shoot it! I oh, definitely did that. Wait. Yep. <laughs> yep. And then you're like, no, I needed you. 
Come back. <laughs> Come back, little hell yeah. can. I love the 80s, 90s-esque. It's soda and video games and... Totally. And footballs, and football. which whatever. Well, yeah, it's the jack. It's Yeah, it's like hyper-masculine. I was going to look that up. Now, I know in one of the modern interpretations of Flash Gordon, he was a football player before he went off to space. Hmm. Flash Gordon, really? Yeah. Duke Nukem works for the CIA, which, like, I don't know why the hell the CIA is involved in this. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't know. Let's just make him in the CIA. One thing I will say... Uh, oh, you shut a can. Um, yeah, right? We just talked about that. No, the whole thing gave me Flash Gordon vibes. Like, there was some Flash Gordon-esque attitude they were trying to go for here. Totally. And I'd be interested if that's correct, but it, it definitely has that feeling for me. Yeah. You know, with, with all the craziness and stuff everywhere i really wish they would have given you a different gun or when you get the upgrade have the gun visibly change in some yes. way instead you just get a little extra squiggle in your firepower box right and I'm, i didn't beat it but i'm pretty sure that that's the case through the whole game like that's what you get right and it would have been cool to like Get some Contra style spread guns and things like that. <laughs> right. No, that would have been I on a development level, I kind of understand why they didn't. Like they had so many sprites, so much other chaos going on. Right. <clears throat> to put in the space for a gun or I love that you explode into pink bouncy balls too. Like I don't understand that. Right. <clears throat> We're all just pink bouncy balls. Everything is pink bouncy balls. It's the Blade Runner of the EGA days. Yeah. Well, that's generous. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Duke doesn't know, but he's one of the robots, too. <laughs> oh, it's so meta. Yeah. He's, no, not a robot, Chris. Uh, oh, Tech sorry. Bot. Tech bot. Tech bot. Tech bot. Get it right. Uh, I liked the, the the interjections into the game from the evil Dr. Proton. Is mm -hmm. that his name? Yeah. Uh, sometimes you'll see him on a video screen and he'll talk shit to you. Yeah. And like all the cameras everywhere are pretty great. He's like watching you. And sometimes he has nine cameras lined up. Yep. Looking at one thing. I don't understand that. I was going to say that seems a bit excessive, but. You know, I've you never designed flaunted. an evil layer, so <laughs> I, maybe you need that. I don't know. Well, I've had a couple evil layers, but I've never put nine cameras. <laughs> have you? <laughs> you use the Mega Man boxes? He's like, you have to. It's Union Riggles. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Get that soda. What? Oh, you don't need it. I don't really need it right now, but I grabbed it anyway. Um, the cameras, though, made me think of Duke Nukem 3D, and it just sort of gave me this, like, it's interesting, like with the flying bots, they reminded me like the pig cops and just, mm -hmm. there was a certain amount of, I find it interesting that there's parts of Duke Nukem 3D I can see from here. Totally, and I didn't yeah. expect that. I didn't expect to be able to see any Duke in Duke. Yeah. Like, say... So they're good like these designers are good at at continuity of mm -hmm. feeling like every every 3d realms game i can think of is very its own thing yeah and it it has a tone and it has a style and they don't deviate from it mm -hmm. and i think even between all these duke games you would probably see the same thing yeah uh done really well it benefits from that, like, holding the canon. And I understand that as a developer, you sometimes need to let canon go to tell your story. But mm -hmm. if you let it go too far, then 
no one's going to care about your story. Yeah, right. Right. Uh, what was your pinnacle and pit? Um, I think the first time I fell off some, that time I fell the, on like the first level and realized that the whole thing was kind of open mm-hmm. and I wasn't, cause when you, you sit down in front of a 3d platformer, yeah. I had never really played this or i have no recollection i must have played this at some point but uh i didn't expect to be able to do that i thought i was dead and and then i was like oh i get this now like i get what this game is this is just a big open thing yeah Mm -hmm. whether that's fast or being completish and methodical it reminds you to save Mm -hmm. like (laughs) It's not like, ha you didn't save for five levels. Not my problem. It's like, no, don't forget to save, dude. You made it this far. We got to keep playing. Don't. Right. Yeah. And I think my, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, and some of it's like the bouncy balls and stuff. I just, like, I don't know. Yeah, they, I hated the bouncy balls. They feel weird and like, why are you here? But I don't care, you know? Yeah. Yeah, this is a mess. I, I think my pit was... Uh, I think on level like four or five, there's a spot where there's two elevators next to each other. And if you ride it up, ride the one all the way to the top, it bashes your head into the wall and kills you. <laughs> yeah. And I had, I like didn't clock that, had used the elevators before. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was like getting far in the level. And in these games, you typically find yourself, if you play in the style I do, where you're just like, balls out running around yeah uh you end up going back to the same spot so i was almost dead and of course i killed myself and like you can't save in the middle of the level right so i like lost a lot of time and it was frustrating and it felt like a gotcha because like you're never gonna fall for that twice Mm -hmm. and and i don't really care for that in in games where it's like you just like don't know you you have to experience it and then like it's not a big deal after that yeah, it's my issue with Sierra games. They're yeah, they're right. only they're only a problem the first time, and then they're just an inconvenience to get past. Mm-hmm. And that would be my clue to developers: like if if the thing about to kill the character is only going to happen once, they're going to learn from it, but it's not going to happen anywhere else or anything else. Take it out. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. The joke is not worth whatever you think it is. It's just not worth it. Right. Right. It's just like a a gotcha that and like and you don't learn in the future. I mean you learn that yes, you have to be careful going up on the elevators, mm-hmm. but like you don't learn that you should always be on the left elevator because it's just like right. not a thing. Right. This this is the place where I was like, oh, this is a secret. No. No. It's not mad. It's just a bunch of fucking footballs. Just a bunch of footballs. So what was your what pinnacle? Was oh, my pinnacle was when I realized I could jump all over the place. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. What about uh, you? My pit was... Um, everything felt weird and arbitrary on my first playthrough. Mm-hmm. It just felt... It was one of those... The first time you sit down with this, this might happen to you, but definitely happened to me... It didn't. It felt like they just threw a bunch of like clip art together, and didn't care. Mm-hmm. Just how it looked to me when I was looking at the screen. But after playing it for about twenty minutes, I'm like, no, this all. I'm not gonna say like that floating platform there makes logical sense. Mm -hmm. But it feels right for the world. The world comes into focus and it's not as chaotic and as random. The the stuff looks like it belongs together. Mm -hmm. You know, it fits within the Duke mythos. Even the footballs and the balloons maybe don't, but you're allowed one goofy thing. Sure. Yeah. And I I also wanted to say, like, this, this game as an arcade game. Yes. 
it does the things that I I like in arcade games. There's no knockback. Mm -hmm. There's you get post hit invincibility, so you're not just like screwed if you get in a bad situation. Yep. It it moves decently. You know when you you jump, he jumps. Right. It's not like uh. There's no uh, slog to it. There's right. No... It's crisp. So like as a arcade platformer, mm -hmm. just like aside from the other things we've talked about. It's. I think it's solid. Right. I think the only thing I would have done, if I like, let's say I was making Duke Nukem today with today's technology, mm -hmm. I would have done the abuse method where the gun aims with the mouse. Yeah, that would have been cool. That'd be cool. Uh, but that wasn't back then a thing, so I'm mm -hmm. not gonna be like, "How come you didn't do?" No, yeah. that's fine. It's, yeah. It did like I remapped the controls, but. I know that was default for the time. That was the control setup that everybody used mm -hmm. back then. They didn't do something weird. It wasn't something bizarre. But my pinnacle was once I remapped the keys. Because mm -hmm. then my hand wasn't cramped. I felt like I could fire fast. Mm -hmm. Like everything just flowed into the game. And I could get in a state of that mental flow with it. Yeah. Um, and could get the speed the game was really built to run at. I could run right. around and be accurate. And it just... But not... Obviously not yet. This is... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is early in. So, yeah. And I can say... Like... As the levels got further on and got a little harder and bigger... Um, it was harder for me to kind of keep track of where everything was. Definitely. But I could see, let's say I had gotten this in like eighth grade, ninth grade. S over the summer, I'd have been able to hit everything without, like by the time the summer was over, I'd have known every secret area, every shortcut, every treasure in the thing. I would have been getting them all and right. saving and just running it over and over because it is a really fun action game yeah yeah it, it what's what it does it does really well right and it's not too hard to just sit down and crank out five minutes with it yeah right beat a level quit yeah or like if you're like me beat a level die halfway through the next level and quit and then come back to it beat it yeah and like that's a good way to play this i i don't like having to restart a level Right. Um, but, you know, it's mm -hmm. the game. It's right. it's not the end of the world. No. None of them are particularly long, but some of them are quite annoying. Yes. <laughs> yeah, especially when you've got multiple keys over lots of different areas. <laughs> exactly. I feel like three keys is max. When you're doing four and five, like... Yeah, please don't make me do it. Don't. Don't do that to me. I just... Or do the thing where one key blocks another key, so you feel like you're always going to one spot and then the next spot and the next spot, as opposed to you bringing everything back to one spot. That just... Yeah. I don't know what the difference is, per se, but... Well... There is it, one, you know. <clears throat> it's the feeling of progressing. Like, there's that one level uh, with the teleporter at the bottom and the keys dispersed throughout the upper part and like i just kept Oop. going hey come on now you know i know right. i know it's all not... right you gonna forgive me i don't know what that was even about there <sighs> yeah i know it felt passive aggressive to me but i don't know <laughs> but anyway so you like go down i kind of nah, i don't even feel like doing it anymore oh my god because you did that i'm sorry matt so you go down and there's a teleporter and you go back up and there's keys throughout the level and like i kept like going getting a key going all the way down unlocking a door going all the way up and like but again that's how i elected to play this with with no right. regard for uh time and efficiency yeah so if you if you want to keep that whole thing in your brain go for it have fun right well and i can if i drill long enough but mm -hmm. that takes a while um yes. what i was what i was covering you up here for while you were talking about that is uh, our short game oh. to replace this short game is 
Way of the Exploding Fist. Okay. Wow. <laughs> now, I asked you about this. Uh, mm-hmm. You asked be- me about this in a weird way, though. I asked you about this in a weird way. There is a game called International Karate. Mm-hmm. And it came out like six months after this. And we will eventually play that. And it's the game everyone will get super excited about if they remember it. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of people remember this game, but it definitely had an influence on international karate. Mm-hmm. So, and someone out there is going to be like, it's karate. No, not when it's in the dollar bin uh, <laughs> cassette tape. It's international karate. Trust me, the guy who made it called it karate. <laughs> no doubt. Uh I loved this game. This was one of the first games I played on the Commodore 64. And there is a flow to it, but that's a little different. Now, our long game situation. Our long game situation has been a meandering journey over the past few months. Yes, I think we've got the editing system worked out where we're going to be on track, but it does mean Half-Life is getting pushed back so that we can make sure we hit for Halloween. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Yes, this is a decision that we made to play Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. <laughs> it is a decision. We're, we're we doing made. it. Yes, we are. We both agreed. We both consented that we were going to do it. Uh, I didn't totally know uh, what I was doing when I said it. Uh and that's all I'll say <laughs> about right. the what I've played so far. Uh yeah. but we well, we we agreed. <laughs> yeah. We were gonna play Gabriel Knight Sins of the Father. But and, no, I had to do Elvira. Yeah. Uh, and you were like, there's an Elvira game. And I was like, okay, let's play that instead, because you know, your Sierra game thing, like I get it. I don't want to make you do it. I didn't even realize Gabriel Knight was Sierra. Oh, yeah, it fully is. But it's later Sierra, right? Like, they they had to have toned that in. We'll never know because we're playing Elvira. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, Elvira for October. We will do Half-Life the beginning of November. We promise. We promise. Um you've already played through it so yeah it's happening uh yeah but i think i think this will be a fun conversation this elvira i think we will have lots of things to say (laughs) i think so too it'll be an interesting conversation what i like about doing the month on these is i know that my opinion of it today will be different than at the end of the month once i've got the hang of it Right, exactly. There's there's a lot of ramp up, especially when it's something, you know, probably no one on Earth has ever played. <laughs> I don't know. They could afford ads in Dragon Magazine back in the day. Oh. <laughs> so, bless you. Somebody had to play it. But these just came out on Good Old Games, which was kind of a, like, okay, these just came out. She did her autobiography. Yeah. Let's, let's do Elvira. Let's do Elvira. Yeah. So be there for it. Be there for it. Be there. Be uh, something. Um, all right. Anything else we should talk about before we go? Or should we let these people get back to their day? I, I think we're all set. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Talk to Thanks. you next time. Bye. Bye. Big thank you to all of you watching, sharing, liking, subscribing, suggesting games, commenting on our videos, or supporting us on Patreon. We appreciate all of your support and look forward to sharing many more videos with you. Thank you again.